Hello everyone. Today we're going to be going over installing mods, client-side mods, alongside Harbor or uh, Skyrim together. Uh, this is a relatively easy process once it's uh, set up and configured. Um, it is going to require the Vortex mod managing client through Nexus Mod Manager. So the first step is we're going to go ahead and download that. Uh, the links for this is going to be in the description. Um, once you have that downloaded, uh, you're going to go ahead and install it. Alright, once Vortex opens, you're going to want to make sure that you're registered or logged in. The easiest way to do this is to click this button and make sure that you log into your Nexus Mod Manager um, account here. Uh, you'll see this Authorize button once you're successfully logged in. And once you've clicked this, Vortex should go ahead and just get you logged into your profile. The next step that you're going to want to do is go ahead and add a game to manage. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click on Games over here. And then we'll go under Discovered. Uh, since the Harbor client does only support the Skyrim Special Edition right now, we're going to be going ahead and clicking Manage here. All right, And we're going to dismiss these right now because I did have uh, mods previously installed, so this error most likely will not show up on your uh, end. Now, once we've added that game to Manage, what we're going to do is go back to the dashboard, and we're going to see that the Skyrim Special Edition shows up here. We want to click to add a tool because ultimately what we want to do is launch Harbor alongside these mods. So we're going to click new tool. We're going to name this Harbor. The target here, this is where your harbor.exe file is located. When you find the file location uh, for the harbor.exe, go ahead and copy the path into the target folder. What you're going to have to do is add in WAC and then harbor.exe. There are no other command line uh, options or parameters and we don't have to mo modify the start in or environmental variables. What we're going to do is go ahead and click save and now we've added this as a tool. The next thing to do is just manage our mods and plugins. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click on mods and in here we'll see that we don't have any mods right now. So what we'll go ahead and do is open up Nexus mod to search for any Skyrim special edition mod that you'd like to add. For example the Skyrim floral overhaul. Uh, Either what we can do is download it via the Vortex button here, which will inject it straight into our client, and then we can manage it from there, or we can click the manual download button. If we click the manual download button, we'll see that we have uh, RAR files or zip files here that we can then go ahead and drag and drop into the Vortex client. All right. Once, I've, once you've dragged and dropped your mod into here, you're going to see uh, an option to install it here. Before we install it, what we're going to want to do is make sure that our mod directory is set up correctly. We can see that right now it's set for my C drive. We're going to want this to be on the same drive that Vortex is installed on. So we can either hit the Suggest button and it'll suggest a directory, or we can go ahead and create our own directory on our particular drive. We'll go ahead and click Apply. And we'll see that this notification in the top right now disappears. If we go back to our mod section here, we can go ahead and add any additional mods that we want to manage. Oops, drag it to the drop section. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and install these one at a time. It is important to do these one at a time because we don't want any compatibility issues to arise. So first we're going to go ahead and do the floral overhaul. Once it's been installed, we'll see the notification bar appears again here to enable it. What we can also do is go into our plugins, and then from here we can go ahead and select it and click Enable. You'll see that it is now enabled. Uh, we'll go ahead and in install our other mod. And as we can see, this mod has some optional parameters that are required to set up during the installation. Uh, we are going to go ahead and select Skyrim Special Edition everything, and we'll go ahead and just select that tick box. There are other mods that will require you to go through some prompts, but uh, Vortex should go ahead and uh, suggest those or walk you through those. Uh, we're going to go ahead and enable that mod as well. And we can see that we can modify the sort order here. Uh, however, what we'll want to do is actually go ahead and click the Sort Now button. Uh, this will check for any mod compatibility issues, as well as go ahead and automatically load the sort order for the mods. If after launching your game through Harbor, you notice that a mod does not load, or a mod gives you the message that it requires a Skyrim script extender, what we'll have to do is also install SKSE.
To install SKSE or Skyrim Script Extender, we'll go ahead to navigate to this URL here. It'll also be in the description. We're going to want to download the current special edition build right here. And we'll go ahead and save that file. Once downloaded, what we'll go ahead and do is extract this to the Skyrim SKSE folder. So that you have this folder here. It's fairly easy to install, but we do have to navigate to the special edition folder for Skyrim. Once we've navigated here, what we'll do is copy all these files in the root directory, none of the folders, into the root directory of the Skyrim special edition. We'll see that I already have these files in here, but we'll go ahead and replace them. From there, what we're going to do is go ahead and take the data folder and copy into the root directory. And again, we'll notice that we already have it. You may see a prompt to merge the two data folders. We'll go ahead and click yes to that. The last thing we need to do is drag and drop the SRC folder into the root directory as well. Again, I already have this here, but we'll go ahead and copy it anyway. The last thing to do is to delete this file right here, v8 underscore context underscore snapshot dot bin. If you don't see the dot bin, what you can do is go under view and then check this box that says file name extensions. What I'd like to do is also just go ahead and rename it to .old, just in case we do need that file or something doesn't work along the way. Once we have all that set up, we'll head back to Vortex and launch Harbor via the button here. You'll see it launches the Harbor client, and we'll go ahead and click play as soon as the integrity check and the update check are done. Once we've loaded in, you'll go ahead and check to make sure any client-side mod that you've installed is loaded. We can see that Sky UI loads here, and if we headed outside, we'd also see that the Floral mod that we installed is also loaded. I'll include the link to the spreadsheet here that has a list of the compatibility list for Harbor and Skyrim Special Edition. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments. However, do not bombard the Skyrim Together subreddit, as you will most likely be banned if you do not read the Frequently Asked Questions post. If anyone has a mod that they'd like me to walk through installing, please reply to the video and I'll see what I can do. Thanks so much for watching, and hope you enjoy Skyrim Together.